I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gore, Maine. This is a nice antique card table. It's in process as you can see. I've been doing a lot of repair work to this apron. But this video will only concern itself with one aspect of this repair work. This table, because it has a flip top, has a swing leg to come out and support the top. And it's a wooden hinge, and that hinge, half of that hinge is broken. Let me show you. So this leg, if the hinge were all there, it swings out to support the top. But as you can see, half the hinge is broken. And so I need to repair it. It's becoming obvious that this piece is not going to come off of here very easy. But as I'm doing this, and struggling with this though, and studying this, I realized that I'm going to cut this, this piece of wood and with a half lap joint, add new wood. And I can do that without removing it from the base. This piece appears to be made out of uh, oak. It kind of looks like probably white oak to me. And I've got a nice uh, piece here. I'm going to cut and mill up a piece of wood the same size as this piece. Okay, so now this will be my first attempt at cutting this knuckle joint here. I'm looking at it. I realized as I was looking at this, there's a, there's a bevel cut here that actually serves as the stop where the other leg meets it right there. And so I think the first thing I'm going to do, I believe it's identical to this one. It almost has to be. I'm going to measure back and I'm going to make that little 45. Yeah, I think that cut looks just about right. as soon as I cut this on the router it, it looked a little odd I was getting ready to plane it down to complete my round over here and then I realized uh, I made this board the same thickness as this board which is 1 and 7 sixteenths but this board is only 1 and 8 inches thick and I realized that it sits like this there's a space there and so my, my knuckle here that I'm forming uh, really needs to conform to the one and an eighth inch diameter, not the diameter of the larger board. So I've got to make a saw kerf here and then uh, remove some wood here and then do the round over again. I want to cut out this wood here so that then I can complete that circle right there. So now my round over here, what will become my hinge, now it lines up a lot better with what I've got there. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I've got some planing to do to clean it up.
Now I want to mark out my knuckles here, uh, the parts I want to cut away. Now I put a piece of scrap under here to bring this up level with the new piece. I want to make sure that these are aligned. This is the part I will remove. Little defect there. I think I'm going to have to glue that down uh, before I proceed. Alright, I'll go make a cup of tea while I wait for this five minute epoxy to set up. You know, I'm concerned that I'm not going to get a great transfer of my marks here. I think I'm going to line this side up with the other side of the piece that it goes to. So this is the way I made these marks. So. Now before I go any further, I just want to have a look and first I got to drive this pin out. I think this, uh, I think this thing could work. I think what I want to do now is Clamp these aligned exactly the, the, the way they are supposed to be, and then I'm going to drill for that pin. Install the pin. And then finish shaping my knuckles down to match the other, the originals. All right, it actually works. Um, not great, but I can see that I need to uh, round over my knuckles to match the uh, old ones. They're bigger. I'm going to do that while it's in place here, that, then I think it's going to work fine. Even though I've got my knuckles, you know, shaped now pretty good, I can take a little more off there, still having problems right here, and I began to realize that the old knuckles are binding into my new piece here. I, I think I have to cove out this area on my new piece. I looked at the, uh, the table. And I think that's what I'm seeing there, because I'm getting a little bit of binding right at that point. Mm. 
Maybe I'll make it a little bigger. But I only need to take out just that little bit. Okay, now I've got this inside gouged out. And now with this out, I can see that these are little oval shaped uh, and I can round this over a little bit more. All right, now it works really well. Works really well now. All right, so now I've got my hinge. The next step is to cut this piece of wood and cut the corresponding piece on the table and glue it in where it belongs. Yeah. I'll cut the old one first, cut my new piece to fit in. It's somewhat arbitrary, but it, it's going to give me a lot of glue surface. I'm going to tape off what I've marked here as a visual. This is the area of wood that I'm going to take away. I've clamped a just a little routing jig onto the wood I need, you know, where I need to cut it away. I'm going to make a lot of uh, multiple light cuts, moving the jig down as I go along. All right, that's. Uh, all the routing I can do for now. I've routed pretty good here. There's a little bit of wood I need to take out by hand. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good cutaway here. And so now, here's my new piece. I've got to cut it to fit in there. So I reconnected my new piece to the swing leg. And I'm going to hold this here right where it belongs and see if I can't clamp this right into position. I think that's just about right. I can mark that out. next step will be to uh, reconnect this to the, uh, the swing leg and see what it looks like. Boy, this looks, uh, this looks good. It looks like well, I might need to take a little bit off the end of that. Take this in. Yeah, it has to match this here. I need to go that way a little bit, which is great because I got a little space there. All right, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, it seems to uh, work well. Uh, I want to set it on the floor and see how it works. It actually works. So now I, I'm going to fill in my lousy joints here. Uh, sand this. I think I'll sand this entire surface. Okay, I've sanded everything down nice and level. 
I think the first thing I'll do is stain the new wood with some thinned out dye stain. Uh, see if I can get it to the basic color of the old wood here. Uh, it's, it's closer to the uh, old wood now. Uh, I'll let that dry and then I'll hit the whole thing with the oil stain. And in theory, all this wood in here doesn't show, but I'm going to just put some stain on it anyway, just in case. A little, I don't want the raw wood to show around the knuckles. Okay, I've let that dye stain uh, dry for a couple hours. Now I'm going to try some oil stain. I'll go over the whole thing. I have some raw umber oil stain, and um, I'm using that because it doesn't have any red in it. But my new piece of wood looks great. It's uh, too bad it just doesn't look like the old wood that well. There's still a lot of contrast. I think what I'm going to try to do is apply more of that oil stain, but uh, pat it and brush it very carefully and try to leave uh, some on the new wood. Okay, I've, uh, I left quite a bit of stain on this new piece, trying to get it the same darkness. Uh, it doesn't need to have any finish on it, but I'm actually going to seal it just with one coat of a Van Dyke Brown aerosol uh, just to fix that stain so it doesn't rub off. Okay, I've let that aerosol lacquer dry. It's not really showing any build. Blends in pretty good, so now uh, I will assemble it. Now I've had this uh, pin in and out of here so many times, I'm going to staple across the bottom of it to make sure it doesn't fall out. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, assemble the rest of the table. I'm going to install the top, take the newspaper off the legs and uh, wax them up and it'll be done. Alright, here we go. We're all assembled. I put a piece of felt here to catch the top. I actually did a lot of uh, other work to this table. Of course, this video just shows the hinge repair. But, uh, it's ready to go. It looks pretty good.